You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it! Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. A little bit late on this video, I appreciate everyone uh, reaching out. I've been uh, incredibly busy, incredibly exhausted lately, but I took Tuesday for the majority off to rest and I'm feeling great. I mean, it's still Tuesday, but I'm feeling great after a gigantic big sleep v-star ability right so we're gonna be going over the top 11 through 20 decks in this video and we're gonna see exactly which decks are just outside of the top 10 decks in the pin comment below i'm gonna be including deck lists for these decks along with reference videos for all that i have created if not they're likely on my to-do list that being said let me know in the comments which decks you think made this list give me deck top 20 19 18 you know what i'm saying let me know in the comments spark a discussion i'd love to get to talk to all y'all um hit that like button hit that subscribe button we're almost at 10.5k so let's get to that many subs if possible and by all means if you are trying to pick up any of the cards for these decks go to ptcgostore.com plug in code zlassage5 to save five percent on your next order of codes you can go to atlastcg.com and plug in code zlassage8 to save eight percent off your pokemon tcg singles and you can go to metafy.gg slash adsacklesage and pick up some coaching for me if you want to help support my content and learn to become better at Pokemon. I can definitely help you out there. That being said, we're going to jump into our number 20 spot and see exactly what are the best top 11 through 20 decks in our Brilliant Stars format. Let's get it. Casting its ribbons around number 20 and not making last week's list is Sylveon VMAX with Arceus V-Star. Now this take on Sylveon is all about getting all those different types of bench Pokemon and different types of Pokemon on your board so you can hit hard with its attack. Now Arceus V-Star does add some cool things to this deck. You could accelerate energies like your darkness energies, basic energy, whatever to your Sylveon line. You have the double turbo that also works instead of the rapid strike energies. And you have some cool attacks like Galarian Maltras V against Mew V Max due to weakness. And you have Evil Tall that is great against decks that play special energies. And Zapdos could be great against an Arceus V deck. And like you can see that there's a lot of cool things going on here. Um, the deck does take a lower bit of a Sylveon VMAX line because it's only good against decks that are really weak to Psychic and this is where it kind of takes a twist. Is Sylveon VMAX an appropriate attacker? I think my answer is relatively no. I'd rather just see that minus out here, add a Psychic type attacker into an Arceus V-Star deck and beef up the Arceus V-Star line. So overall this deck's cool. I think players are going to like it because Sylveon's a really cool deck. I wouldn't be surprised if this deck stayed in a relatively similar spot to the number 20 spot or if it fell off completely going forward, but it is a really cool deck. Floating like a cloud to number 20 and not making last week's list is Whimsicott V-Star. Now, this is a deck that I thought would always be in the top 20 or like find its way into the top 20 somewhere. And that's because it can block special energy attachments so you can see that like we have the crushing hammers, we have the double turbo energies like we can we can really like build up our attacks really quickly and then we can snipe off any pokemon with energies with our v star attack so i think there's a lot of cool things that you can do with whimsicott v star and energy denial is huge we just saw that sander watch check was able to make top eight at liverpool regionals with an energy denial zork control deck and we do see other elements like arceus shadow rider um that does play control elements or uh, energy denial elements so i think as this deck like kind of picks up i don't know if it's the best energy denial that we have or the best energy stopping that we have um the idea is really cool the list is really fun it's one of those things where whimsicott could be good maybe not this format but it, it's all right i think it's going to probably be relatively similarly placed going forward if not taking a step back out of the top 20 list single striking for that three-way tie at number 20 or maybe maybe not a three-way tie it might be a four-way tie i'm looking at my list right now it might be a four-way tie either way single strike urshifu v max and it's now turned into a little bit of an umbreon single prize card uh with urshifu box you can see that you have hound zoom as the core using single strike roar to accelerate to umbreon umbreon v max single strike urshifu v single strike urshifu v max you use the urshifu v max to go through anything like a dralid on v max or is on a set to v you have umbreon that's great against mew uh you also have more peko that's helpful against things like malamar or mew um 
just due to typing and being a single prize card. So you've got a lot of ways. I did add Battle VIP Pass in here. Um, it is one of those things where as I update my decks, I do find Battle VIP Pass to be incredibly important uh, because your turn one is probably going to be your most important turn. So we do see a lot of those in these decks. Overall, I think this deck's cool. I don't know if it's as good as other single strike variants like Gengar VMAX, um, just because Gengar VMAX hits those numbers for only two energies uh, with its fear and panic attack. And of course, you could just tech it around a little bit more. Um, I think this concept's it's all right. And it's one of those things where it's probably a little bit too low on the list at number 20. I can see this moving up to be like a number 15 or maybe even a top 10 deck. I just think players are going to be playing Gengar or not single strike at all. I'll have to see how this deck continues, but single strike looking pretty cool. And I do like how this list plays out a lot. Okay, I, I was uh, right. This one is the last deck tied for number 20. Rapid Strike it into number 20. And dropping from number 16 last week is Rapid Strike Urshavu VMAX with Geller and Moltres. Now, I've slightly updated this list um, so that you have a little bit more things going right. I looked at Robin Schull's Liverpool regional list and took some nods of inspiration from there. And I've looked at other Rapid Strike lists and taken some nods of inspiration from there. I think players are looking for fighting in dark type decks really to try to counter this form at. And I'm sure that's like why the appeals there and why players are going to be playing this list. I've seen players try to build this deck with Arceus V-Star. I've seen players try to reinvent this deck a whole bunch. It is basically part Rapid Strike Urshvu and Teleon mixed with part uh, Gallery Vultures V. That's really where it's at. It's enough to just beat Mew. Maybe it's enough to maybe beat um, some single prize card decks that don't play Manaphy. There's not really anything that's like super cohesive between like energy switch. So I'm not like a super huge fan of where this deck has taken its toll or like its turn. And I do think with like Robin Schulz really showing what a rapid strike winning list can look like and what the dimensions look like. It's one of those things where I think to me, this is a deck that's on its way out. I wouldn't be surprised if it fell off the list completely just to other rapid strike decks in general. Dragapult haunts the scene at number 16 and falls all the way from number 11 last week. Dragapult VMAX is all about hitting max phantom, doing damage counters to your opponent's active, or 130 to your opponent's active, and then some damage counters to their bench. I kind of like an, a stable version of Jolteon, just doing less damage output. And I say stable because like you don't need to hit the damage on the bench with Zigzagoon or Inteleon, but considering this deck already runs those cards and is trying to do those things, to me this is just like a dark, weak Jolteon that does less damage overall. Um, and does not have cool things going on like elemental badge so overall I, I think that dragapult's cool it does have ways to get around manaphy and if manaphy becomes an issue I, I could totally see why players would play this over jolteon but considering so many decks are trying to counter Mew right now i do not think dragapult v max is appropriately positioned in the metagame and to me it just seems like a weaker choice than what jolteon otherwise could have been now this deck does have some advantages against other like single prize card decks or can do pretty well against arceus but it, it just seems to struggle against most other decks in the format I, I can totally see this deck like just falling out of the top 20 uh like most of the other decks in the lower part of the top 20 decks burning it up at number 15 and moving on up from number 18 last week is victini v max now honestly i i didn't really see this deck seeing too much traction um and a lot of these top 20 decks especially the 15 through 20 just seemed to be a random assortment of decks that did okay at a couple events um or small online events or anything else like that victini v max here gains uh power from magma basin you accelerate energies from your discard pile and then attached to your bench Pokemon. That's why there's all those switch and escape ropes and air balloons. Um, overall, I think this list is cool. It's the same list that did well at the late night series a few weeks back. Um, that we've kind of seen pop up here or there. I think this type of me is the type of deck that's just like it exists. Fire type decks exist. Um, I don't know if it's better to play Victini, Entei, Moltres, uh, anything. I mean, I think Max Victory is cool. And I certainly like it with Leon and Choice Belt. And I think there's certainly some opportunities where this deck can see success. To me, I think it's probably appropriately placed. I think we need a, like a fire type deck that's number 15. There's just nothing that really caused the fire type decks to be great, especially with Suicune and Ice Rider just randomly running around as well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this deck dipped back down, if it went up a little bit, but it seems pretty much appropriately placed if you ask me. 
Galloping into number 14 and dropping from number 10 last week is Shadowrider Calyrex VMAX with Arceus V-Star and some Disruption Package and Zapdos. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this deck. Uh, shout out to Andrew Zabala. Check out their YouTube channel if you haven't got a chance already. They, I believe they made top 32 at Salt Lake with this and players like Evan Campbell have really been carrying this deck so far. Uh, I got a chance to play around with this deck the other day and I thought it was really cool with um, using Shadowrider Calyrex Vs for his attack. Slowing down your opponent from attaching special energies, then going for Cry of Destruction after they play things like Elsa Sparkle, then going Flannery and taking things out. Like, I thought, like, there's a really cool energy disruption vibe that I enjoyed from this deck. Of course, there's some odd inclusions that are nods towards uh, the creator of the deck, like Shauna and Marnie. But, I mean, if you're playing things like Arceus V-Star and you're able to starboard things in general, it's one of those things where you can search out specific supporters for specific times. Same thing as Luminion, and you can always pal pad them back. So it's cool. It's I. Um, but the whole goal is to really just power up things with Arceus V-Star when you're not going for an energy disruption thing, um, and just powering up with, uh, Underworld Door and attacking. Uh, overall, it, it's a pretty cool package and it's got a lot of answers. Um, I, I do think that this deck can be polished up and it can be quite strong, especially considering Astral Barrage is very powerful against Malamar. I could see this deck on its way up, but I would like to see a fresh coat of paint on it, uh, because there's just, like, way too many moving pieces for this deck to be as consistent as what you want it to be. Rapid striking it all the way to number 13 and not making it on the list last week is Robin's take on Rapid Strike Urshifu. With all these one of cards, I think uh, the running name is Rapid Strike Urshifu Checkmates. And the whole goal of this deck is that you go Rapid Strike Urshifu, go G Max, Rapid Flow, but 120, 120, you have access to telescopic sight. You can search out many things with Shadow Rider. You could also play this deck very similar to a dark toolbox deck, doing some light damage with Hoopa and offering up some prize cards and then going gallery and Maltras out of nowhere um a cool play that this deck quite often does and i mean i read it on stefan ivanov's twitter so it has to be valid right um but but in all seriousness it works is that metacham v if you ever get the metacham v off and your opponent took a prize card last turn um or during their last turn you could use raihan again on that turn and then kind of bring it back up so there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this deck um Although I do find that this deck is likely too difficult to catch on majority. So as much as they got number 13 by Robin's regional placement alone and winning Liverpool regionals, um, that's pretty much what it got. And another player played a very similar list to this. Um, I, I, I just don't see this deck taking off. And I don't even know if Robin would play this deck again. I think um, it, it's one of those things where the deck is probably too difficult to play for its own good. And that doesn't necessarily always translate to be a beautiful thing. Um, it's, it's amazing that Robin was able to win a regionals with this, but Robin's also one of the best, or if not one of the best players in the game, if the best player in the game. Um, so I think a lot of decks under their hands would have done amazing. So we'll, we'll have to see where this deck goes. I don't necessarily think it's going to go anywhere, um, but it is a deck that I will attempt to, uh, play out on the channel at some point in the near future. Wrecking Havoc at number 12 and not making last week's list is Malamar VMAX with Arceus V-Star. Uh, to me this seems like a very spiritual take on what what Gengar VMAX Arceus V-Star tried to be um, and when it won Salt Lake City Regionals and then everyone was just like Gengar and Arceus is not, not as good as uh, just just playing Malamar and Arceus and it, it's like weird like I, I go back and forth like would I rather play Malamar Arceus or Gengar Arceus I don't know if it ever matters I think it's better just to be playing straight Gengar and that's what the numbers show with Gengar being at number six more success um, overall and it's one of those things where like you're just trying to accelerate energies with Arceus V onto Malamar VMAX using its slight disruptive attack with Path to the Peak and Marnie to really hurt your opponent. Bibberol gives this deck strength and I mean Battle VIP Pass is really strong. I mean as you can see there is a, th a theme about Battle VIP Pass in my list nowadays. It's definitely one of those cards that I'm uh, kind of holding crutches onto. I think it's really good. Um, overall I think this deck is just like okay and I think it's like at an okay placement. Uh, this deck to me could go to number 15. It could fall off the list. Um, I don't think there's necessarily any rhyme or reason why anyone's playing it beyond it just being a semi-successful deck It's all right and most decks with Arceus V-Star are playable in general So I, I really don't know where this deck's gonna go um, However, it does seem like some people like it So it's probably gonna stay within the top 20 likely not moving into the top 10 Rapid striking it all the way to number 12 and tying for that top spot with Arceus Malamar is Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Um, this traditional take on the deck, which is like Raihan and just accelerating fighting energies and going ahead and Gale Thrust GMAX Rapid Flow is the purest form of playing Rapid Strike Urshifu. And you'll, you'll hear me say it on the channel a few times, but 
If you have the option between playing a straight up consistency deck where you focus on the core elements of things like G Max Rapid Flow with that Meta Chim and the Passimian and just don't necessarily take away from that and you can include extra cards like Echoing Horn or extra consistency cards, that's going to be better than playing things like Rapid Strike Urshfu Checkmate like Robin Shawls or playing uh, Rapid Strike Urshfu Galarian Maltra's V. I think that like when you play a deck like this, sometimes there's that magical feeling and i do think that it just 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 works like if we look at a lot of the top decks in the format straight up mew best deck in formats straight up malamar second best deck back in formats straight up arceus with inteleon and no other techs better jolteon better you can see like it just gets to that point where the top four decks in format are pure decks and i think that's really going to be the same way for this um Rapid Strike Urshifu is a deck that I think could eventually dip back into the top 10. Um, it just depends on how many players are playing Mal Manaphy in their decks and what's really going on with the rest of the metagame with um, with Malamar up there and it killing things out there. I, I, I do think that there's a chance that Rapid Strike Urshifu can do well, especially if they do not play Manaphy. So stay tuned. I think this deck could uh, definitely move up a little bit. Otherwise, I think it's probably just going to stay within the top, uh, the, the top half of the top 20. And this deck might also just turn the other rapid strike urshifu and Gal rapid strike uh, gallery mulches v all turning into this variant we'll have to see how it goes though and there you have it peeps we got uh got rapid strike urshifu coming in at the top of this list just barely missing out on the top 10 decks we'll see if it can maybe make it in uh to the top 10 especially with robin Schulz. very interesting take on the deck that also made this list so I think Rapid Strike's on a lot of players' minds, especially as we see Jolteon, Gengar, Arceus decks. I mean, of course, the whole idea is dodge Mu Max, and that's always going to be an issue in our Brilliant Stars format, but we'll see exactly how it goes. As I said before in the pinned comment, we do have all access to those lists. You can copy and paste them into PTCGO. If you are a YouTube channel member, or if you are a Patreon member with a deckless hookup or higher, you can totally gain access to all of this cool stuff in the Discord server before the videos are created. I'm often creating things afterwards, always tinkering with all these different decks, and it's really fun. So check that out. It's a great way to help support me as a content creator. You can go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code zealassage 5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. Again, another great way to help me out. Go to atlastcg.com, plug in code zealassage 8 That also helps me out as well to save off your Pokemon TCG singles. And you can go to metafy.gg slash adzaclassage, and I will help you on your Pokemon journey. I'm one of the game's most accomplished coaches and players, and I'd, I'd seriously love to help you grow in the game. So hit me up for a session or a free coaching consultation today. I'd totally love to help you on your journey. That being said, we have a great week filled with content. Um, no grand finals from the late night series. Like I said, I took uh, a lot of Monday night and Tuesday off. But we will have some deck profiles. I'm looking at my whiteboard. What do we got going on here, whiteboard? I do want to be covering Rapid Strike, Urshfu, Checkmate, Arceus, Galar, Birds, Malamar, Inteleon, Arceus, Inteleon again, and uh, Arceus, Beedrill decks. Those are all on my to-do list, so we'll see exactly where we go. If there's anything else that I didn't list there that sounds pretty competitive, let, let me know for a second just uh out <laughs> there let me know in the comments below totally love to hear back from all y'all and again spark a discussion if there's anything you want to talk about it that's cool join the discord server as well totally love to see that hit that like button it does help boost the youtube algorithm subscribe that being said i'm rambling on i'll catch up with all y'all later peace out have a great one i truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video it means the world to me and my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire pokemon tcg community if you haven't already Help Signal boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video, and have yourself a great day. Thanks.